Make a snack. Make a copy, known as an image, of a Raspberry Pi SD card using a Mac, then copy or flash the image to a new SD card. Now, as you probably already learned, if you spend time copying Raspberry Pi OS onto a new SD card, setting it up for your local Wi-Fi network, updating and upgrading the software, configuring Spy and I2C and adding CircuitPython, this can take quite a bit of time. But when you want to start a new project, you're ready to go and you don't want to repeat all of these steps. Well, fear not. We'll show you how you can take a working SD card from Raspberry Pi that you've already set up and configured, create an image file so that you can save this on your Mac as a backup, and then use that image to flash or quickly copy the image onto an SD card whenever you want to quickly set up a Pi. Now the process of creating an image takes about 25 minutes, but once that image is created and saved to your Mac, you can keep flashing that image onto new SD cards and that process only takes about 4 minutes. And as always, we've got a step-by-step -step written tutorial that you can follow, and you can find that tutorial at bit.ly slash pi dash backup, all lowercase. So why don't you start up the Pi with your configured SD card, and first what we're going to do is temporarily change the host name of this Pi. And we're going to do that so that our backup doesn't have the same name as the host name of a Pi that we're using. So we're going to launch the terminal program. I'll use Spotlight on the Mac, that's Command Spacebar, type the word Terminal, press Return. Terminal launches, then I'm going to press Shift Command Plus a few times to increase the font size. And I'll log into my Pi using the SSH command. That's SSH Pi, which is our standard username, at the host name of the Pi dot local. And this Pi happens to be called Meal Mascaris, which is the Pi that I set up for the Mask Distributing Talking Robot project. You likely have a different host name on your Pi, so be sure to use that. Then press return. Now you probably aren't gonna see these two warnings that just showed up on my screen, but if you do see them, you can just respond yes until you're asked to enter your password, enter your password, press return, and you should end up at the prompt. Now we change the host name in the raspy config utility, so type in sudo raspy dash config, press return. Now the Pi configuration tool runs, hostname is under system options, which should be highlighted right at the start so we can press return. The raspy config tool sometimes does this weird flashing when it moves from screen to screen. Then use the down arrow to select hostname, press return again. You should get some information about how to enter a valid hostname, press return, and then enter your new hostname. I think pi-backup is a good name for my Pi backup, so that's the name that I'm going to use. Press return once you've entered your new hostname. That brings us back to the main screen. Press the right arrow twice to highlight the word finish, then press return. When asked if you want to reboot, select yes with a return. And we actually don't need the Pi to reboot, so we can quit the terminal program, and if we scroll through our instructions just before we get to step two, we can power down our Pi and remove the SD card. Then insert the SD card into a reader and then plug the reader into your Mac. And then we use the disk utility program that comes with each Mac to make a backup of the image on this SD card. So I'm going to launch the disk utility using Spotlight. I'll press Command Spacebar, then type in disk utility and press return. Disk utility runs. Then under the view menu, make sure show all devices is selected and it is. And then we want to select the SD card volume from the list on the left. And my list on the left looks more complicated probably than the one on your Mac because I've got the separate two terabyte drive and I've got a time capsule set up. But you want to make sure that you select your storage media. Don't select the boot volume underneath it. And you can verify that you've selected the proper SD card because you should see this little rectangle in the upper right shows the proper size for the card. My card's a 32 gig card, so this number is close to 32 that's correct. Then under the file menu, select new image and then new image from your SD card's name. Then the save a file box shows up and then under the format pull down in the lower right hand corner, it might say read only like mine does, but we want to pull down in this and select DVD slash CD, which I know is really weird to select when you're making a copy of an SD card, but trust me, this is the right format. Then you want to select where you want to save the image file that you're about to create from your SD card. I'm going to save mine right here on the desktop. Then press save. You might be asked to enter your Mac's password. Do that. Again, it's your Mac's password, not the Pi. And then this next step of actually reading the data from the Pi and creating the backup image takes a while. It took about 25 minutes on my Intel MacBook Pro. So go grab a beverage. I'll speed this up so you don't have to wait. And when you're done, the progress bar will be fully blue. It says operation complete with this green check mark. And when you see the this, you can just click the done button. Then you can quit disk utility. We won't need that anymore. And I'll minimize the browser. And this file named generic storage device media is our image. It contains everything that was on the SD card. Now, unfortunately, disk utility doesn't create a file with a proper extension that we need. This file has the extension .cdr at the end of it. We actually need to change that to .iso so that we can use it in the future. So why don't you click on the file, press return to enter rename mode, then change the last three letters from cdr to .iso and press 
return to get out of rename mode, your Mac will ask you to confirm that this is what you want to do. So just select use.iso and you're good. Now also, this isn't such a great file name, so I'm going to rename my file pi-backup, which is also a handy way for me to remember the host name that was on this SD card. And I'm going to need that host name when I flash this image onto a new SD card, and then I try to use that SD card to log into the Pi. So we're now done with our boot image here. That's our SD card, so we can eject this. The Mac shortcut for eject is to just drag it into the trash, which is really bad interface design since trash usually means delete. But if you want, you can right click and select eject. It does the same thing. And now we're done with our backup. So now since we temporarily named our Pi that was using this SD card to Pi-Backup, we want to go back and change the host name back to its original name. So take your card out of the card reader, put it back into your Pi, turn the Pi on, it should boot up in about 30 seconds. Then let's launch the terminal program, command spacebar, type in terminal, press return. I'm going to increase the font size with shift command plus a few times, and then log into that temporary name. So that's SSH Pi at Pi-Backup.Local for me, press return turn. Now, if you get any warnings about matching host keys, just select yes, enter your password and press return. And then we'll do just what we did before to change our host name. Only this time, we're going to be changing the host name back to the original name. So we're going to launch raspy-config with sudo raspy-config, press return, press return on system options, then use the arrows to select host name. You'll get info on entering valid host names, select OK, then enter the old host name. So for me, that was meal maskeris that was named after the famous Mexican wrestler of a thousand masks, a good name for a mask distributing robot. And after you press return, you're back on the home screen, right arrow twice, select finish, and you should select reboot. But I'm specifically going to show you what happens sometimes when you reuse a name on a different Pi. So I'm going to deliberately select no here so that I can show you this error that occurs and how to work around it. So I'm going to type sudo halt, press return. I'm logged out of my Pi, and then in about 30 seconds, I can try to log back in. So I'm going to log in with ssh pi at meal dash local and watch what happens when I press return. I get this really scary warning. It says it is possible that someone is doing something nasty. It says host key verification failed. The reason this happens is there's a discrepancy between a name that was used and an IP address that the Pi was aware of. If this problem ever occurs, never worry. Just log in using a sudo before ssh pi at your hostname.local. And if you do this, the password that you enter will be the password for your Mac first, not the pi. That's because you used a super user command. That's what sudo is, super user do. And we see the prompt here is the Mac's name. So we need to enter the Mac's password. And after we enter the Mac's password and press return, we're asked the pi's password, enter that and press return. And we see that we're logged in at the pi prompt. So now I can say sudo halt to stop my pi. I can power down since I'm not going to use it anymore, close my terminal, and at this point I've made a backup image of my pi's SD card. Now that took some time, but here's where the time saving comes in. So if we want to set up a new pi, instead of downloading and configuring software from scratch, we can just flash that image file we just created on our Mac onto a new SD card. That only takes four minutes and we save ourselves about an hour of work. Now, while we use the Mac's disk utility program to create an image file of the SD card, if we want to take that image file and flash it back onto a new SD card, we use a different piece of software, free software from the Bellina Corporation called Etcher. So to get the Etcher software, if you don't have that already, just search on the internet for Bellina Etcher. It's easy to find. It should be the first option that shows up. And when you visit the website, it should detect the type of computer that you're using. My button says download for Mac OS. Since I'm using a Mac, I'm going to click that button. I'll save the installation file to my desktop. I've got a fast connection. It downloads in a few seconds. Then you can scroll down to the next set of instructions. But first, actually, why don't we minimize our browser and install Etcher? So just double click on the DMG file that you just downloaded. Mine's on the desktop. Then drag the Etcher icon, this green cube here, into the Applications folder. Bellina Etcher is now in your Applications folder, so you can actually close this window. We can highlight both this green Etcher icon and the .dmg file and drag those both in the trash. No worries, you're not throwing away the actual application that's in your Application folder. And then we can launch Etcher, so I'm going to use Spotlight, Command Space, type in Etcher, press Return. Your Mac will warn you that you downloaded this over the internet. We know this, so press Open. It's safe. 
and etcher runs. Now we're using this to flash our .iso image to our new SD card. So get out your new SD card and insert that into an SD card reader, plug that into your Mac, and you should see the volume for the card reader mount. Mine is called no name. Then click on flash from file in Bellina etcher. Select the .iso file containing your pi image, mine is pi-backup right here on my desktop. Click open, select target. So this is where you're gonna flash your file to. That's your SD card. So check the box next to the volume for your SD card. That's this 32-ish gig generic storage device media for me. Then click select and click flash. And you're asked to enter your Mac, not your Pi's password to verify that it's okay to overwrite a volume that's attached to your Mac. And once you enter your password, you'll see a flashing progress indicator, then the validating progress. This whole process takes about four minutes and then congratulations, my friend, you've got a new SD card. And now that you have Etcher on your Mac, each time you want to set up a new Pi, it should only take four minutes. Now I don't want notifications from Bellina Etcher and I don't want to flash another SD card. So I'm just going to command Q to quit out of Etcher. And the last steps in our tutorial document remind you to insert your new SD card with its new software on it into the new Pi that you're going to be using. Log in using the name for the backup. So I'll SSH in with Pi at Pi-backup.local. Enter your password, then once you're at the prompt, launch sudo raspy-config. We can rename this Pi to whatever host name we want to use. We've done this twice before, so I'm not going to retrace the steps, but you've got these in the tutorial document if you need them. Now, one more thing to be aware of. If you created your image file a while ago, my rule of thumb is about once every six months. You might want to do an apt-get update and an apt-get upgrade to update any programs that are on this Pi to make sure that you've got the latest versions. Those are commands entered at the command prompt and that we covered in the Headless Pi install tutorial. But hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. I make lots of mistakes when I'm experimenting with my Pi, so it's nice to have a backup handy that I can restore without having to do a complete reinstall. I also do projects every week when I'm teaching physical computing, so creating backup images that I can restore onto an SD card can be a real time saver. So if you found this useful, let me know with a like or a comment. There's lots more great stuff on my YouTube channel for you to check out. Share these videos with others and let me know when you make something awesome.